As you probably know by now, diamonds are a premium currency in Forge of Empires. So what if there was an easy, but time-consuming, way to get more of them? One of the best options is to build a diamond farm or a city completely set aside for the pursuit of diamonds. Unfortunately, nearly every method of winning diamonds easily, from winning wishing wells as daily specials to guild expeditions, has been heavily nerfed as of recently. So today, we'll be looking at all the ways that you can either get diamonds or wishing wells in the game today. Even after their nerf, guild expeditions provide a ton of diamonds, and remains one of the best and most consistent sources of diamonds. There's only three encounters that produce diamonds, and they can be found in level 4. Completing these every week will net us about 4200 diamonds per year, which is already a pretty good start. The best part about the expeditions is that you can also get fountains of youth, which provide diamonds once in a while. Unfortunately, you'll only average one fountain of youth every 16 weeks, or three and a quarter per year. The partial good news is that you'll average the same for the fountain of youth shrink kits. The guild battlegrounds are also decent for diamond gain, but it depends wildly on your league and the number of battles or negotiations you can complete daily. The good news is that it doesn't take too much effort to equal the diamonds that you get from the guild expeditions after the nerf. This chart has a lot of numbers on it, but the important thing is the last section. You only need to do 68 fights per day or 54 negotiations in order to exceed the diamonds that you get from the guild expeditions if your guild is in the Diamond League. Of course, this doesn't mean that you have to reach higher attrition. Using siege camps, it's easy enough to farm low attrition fights to hit those numbers. We also tend to forget about the PvP arena, but it's not a bad source of diamonds. For each battle, you have about a 2.3% chance of winning diamonds. Attempts regenerate at a rate of 1 per 2 hours, less with the castle system's boosts. Assuming that you use every attempt that regenerates, that's about 2,000 diamonds annually. You can also win diamonds from the end of week chests, but that'll only give you about 200 to 500 diamonds per year if you place in the top 500 to 50 players. The top player will net an average of 2,000 diamonds per year from their chests. There's also a chance at winning a wishing well every week in the PvP arena. As long as you are within the top 500 players, you've got a 20% chance every week. This will net you an average of 10.4 wishing wells per year, which is actually pretty impressive. Now, quite possibly the most overlooked sources of diamonds are the Arctic Harbor and Oceanic Terminal. And for good reason too. They're expensive, and you have to be in the end game to benefit from them. However, they each have a single crew member that has a chance at giving you diamonds. Assuming you can get each to level 10, the one from the Arctic future has at most a 2% chance of finding 35 diamonds, while the Oceanic future one has a 10% chance of finding 30. You've got about a 63% chance of seeing either of these crew members per time that you send their ships. Assuming that you send your ships as soon as possible with no time boosts, you'd be able to send the Arctic futures every 18 hours and the Oceanic futures every 17. In total, this means that you can get about 215 diamonds per year from the Arctic Harbor, but 976 from the Oceanic Terminal. That's not too shabby an investment, so long as you're in those ages and have the goods to send the expeditions. We've also got to mention the castle system here. It won't give you any diamonds, but it will give you a very small number of wishing wells as you level it. In total, you can get 14 wells and 14 shrink kits. However, if you've watched my recent castle system video, you'll know that it will take at least 12 years to unlock all of these. There's quite a few more activities where you can get wishing wells. These include the daily challenges, where you can average about 5.5 wells per year and 1.4 shrink kits. The Mughal and Aztec settlements, where you can average up to 24 wells per year by looping their quest lines to get fragments of the wells. And even in some events, you won't see wishing wells as daily specials anymore, but you will occasionally be able to win fragments of the wells. It's even possible to buy wishing wells, their shrink kits, and fragments of both from the antiques dealer. You can get diamonds from more than just in-game activities, however. One of the main sources for diamond farmers are the buildings that are in your city. The main buildings for diamond farmers are going to be your Wishing Well and Fountain of Youth. Both provide a 1% chance at 50 diamonds, which averages you 181.5 diamonds per year from each. They can also be shrunk using their shrink kits to two-thirds of their original size. There's no difference in odds between the two, and the only difference is that the Fountain of Youth is only obtainable from the guild expeditions. 
The Crow's Nest from the summer event has a 5% chance at giving you 25 diamonds, averaging you 456 diamonds per year. While that does sound higher than a wishing well, the Crow's Nest is much bigger and is actually much less efficient than a wishing well in terms of diamonds per tile. Lastly, there's the Hedge Maze, but I don't recommend building this unless you're desperate. It'll average you 365 diamonds per year, but it's also bigger than wishing wells. I'd really only pick this one up if you don't have a lot of wells yet and a lot of empty space. There's also some great buildings that give diamonds. If you want the full rundown, check out my best great buildings video, but the short of it is that the seed vault is the best, reaching over 8700 diamonds per year at level 100 when aiding the maximum number of players daily. It's followed by the Blue Galaxy, which can double diamonds from Wishing Wells, giving up to 1,940 diamonds per year at level 100. The Himeji Castle and Space Carrier also can give diamonds, but the odds are dismal and don't even top 1,000 diamonds annually at level 100. What is interesting is that the Space Carrier can provide Wishing Wells and their Shrink Kits, and also the Temple of Relics can provide Fountains of Youth. The Temple of Relics can generate up to 43 Fountains of Youth annually at level 100 when playing all five levels of the Guild Expeditions, and the Space Carrier can get up to 18 Wells or Shrink Kits per year. Make sure that you get both of these built if you're trying to build up Wells or Fountains of Youth. The Chateau Frontenac can boost diamond rewards from quests up to 600% at level 100. Lastly, you can get diamonds from the quests and the campaign map. Both of these options are non-renewable, so once you win diamonds from them, you can't get diamonds from them ever again. Some quests specifically give diamonds, but any quest that shows the random reward icon has a small chance at giving diamonds once, at which point it will be replaced by metals. Towards the later ages in the tech tree, you'll find story quests giving you diamonds more often, and I highly recommend that you level a Chateau Frontenac to help boost your diamond gain. With Space Age Titan releasing, for example, there are 15 new recurring quests, each of which has a chance at giving 20 diamonds once. That's up to 300 diamonds unboosted, but with a level 80 chateau, you could be making 1800 diamonds just from those new quests. I generally try to complete each unique recurring quest until I get diamonds for every age that I move through. The campaign map has certain provinces that can give you diamonds, spread across all the ages maps. In total, you're not going to win much, only 5,700 from all the maps together, but that's not a small number. I think that's everything though, so I hope that this helps you think a little bit more about diamond production. I will be making another video soon about actually building a diamond farm and how to start one, so make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss it. I'll see you all next time.